646 back now with your Sunrise Smart Start this Thursday. News breaking overnight. A woman here in the city in her 20s shot on Lyle Avenue. That was just after midnight. RPD says currently no suspects in custody. If you have any leads that can help, Detectives want you to please call 911 ASAP. Elsewhere, Rochester police have identified Fantasia Stone as the victim found dead, burned at an apartment building Tuesday night on Jefferson Avenue. The 38-year-old woman was trapped in the hallway. Police confirmed that is the same property they responded to yesterday for a fire on the second floor. No word yet on what caused that fire or if it is connected in any way to the death of that woman this week. Both cases, though, are deemed suspicious in nature. A man is in the hospital after a stabbing last night in Rochester. Chester. Police gave us a new update on him. He's in stable condition. The 29 year old was seriously injured in the attack. Happened just before 7 near Joseph Avenue and Sullivan Street. No arrests have been made. With the warmer weather here, dirt bikes and ATVs are back out on the street. Gangs and young kids are typically blamed for racing throughout the city, breaking the law, putting their own lives and others in danger. City Councilman Jose Pio tells us the laws we have on the books already are good enough, just need more enforcement. He says this is against the law on multiple fronts. The vehicles are not registered, the speed limit flat out ignored, and he's demanding tougher action. We don't really have the enforcement in place. And when we keep writing new laws or we increase the fines on these, it doesn't do anything if we're not enforcing the laws that are on the books. We help enforce this, tracking the riders until they make a pit stop and then police could surround the vehicle. He adds this can cause insurance rates to go up, not for the uninsured bikes, but for the innocent drivers and other cars hit in an accident. A first of its kind safety report reveals more than 90% of Army National Guard Black Hawk crashes are caused by human error. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer was among those calling for an investigation after the Black Hawk went down in Minden in 2021, killing National Guard members on board, three of them. He He's urging the Army and the Air Force to implement new safety recommendations outlined in that report from the Government Accountability Office. These improvements include more training for pilots, a database used to track incidents, more maintenance crews to repair the choppers faster so pilots can meet their required flight hours. During a teleconference, Schumer also emphasized the need for more flight simulations as well. A rally in Rochester's advocates are calling on Governor Kathy Hochul once again to raise the current minimum wage. They're pushing for what's called the Raise the Wage Act, a proposal that would include a $21.25 minimum wage in the final state budget deal. And that rate would go up gradually along with the cost of living. New York State is getting $112 million as part of a massive settlement with the e-cigarette company Juul. Attorney General Tish James announced the settlement made alongside five other states in D.C. This comes amid other agreements with other states, settlements including West Virginia, all accusing the company of marketing its products to teens. Jewel targeted youth by glamorizing vaping with colorful ads featuring young models at flashy parties in New York City and the Hamptons, all while downplaying the harmful effects of vaping. In at least one New York City school, a Juul representative falsely told high school freshmen that its products were safer than cigarettes. James, as this is the largest settlement with Juul thus far, the settlements come after an investigation by 33 states along with Puerto Rico into the marketing actions of the company. The town of Pittsburgh will now allow the drag story time event to go on without the group needing to pay all that extra money for security and planning. It was thousands of dollars. This comes after organizers with Pittsburgh community were told they would need to pay up for their own security. The group didn't want to do that and moved the event to a bookstore for the same date. The town released a new statement saying under the threat of a potential lawsuit, the town will allow the event to go on as originally planned at the community center without them making without making them pay. Saturday's event, though, is staying at the bookstore. It's at full capacity. There is, by the way, another drag story time scheduled for the community center coming up on the 23rd. Dozens of local parents are scrambling, forced to look elsewhere for child care now after staffing shortages forced a facility in Farmington to downsize, telling them they're out of luck for the time being. Alex Love has the story, and Alex, what is the reason behind this sudden change for these families? That's right. The owner of the Carolot Child Care Facility says they're forced to stop services in a few of their classrooms, a decision burdening 30 families in the small Ontario County community of Farmington. Now, the closure will go into effect tomorrow, and parents claim they only had a couple days notice to figure out what to do. Daycare management says this is due to staffing shortages, which parents add they were told last month they'd have to drop their kids off later in the morning due to the lack of staff already. Now they're being told there aren't enough workers to safely care for their kids all day. 
Care a lot told parents in some cases they can hold their spots should things change, but can't guarantee care every day. Our intention all along was to give them two weeks notice. Um, you know, and so we were planning to do this May 1st, but things culminated this week. We had a couple teachers that got COVID, so they're out. So we, we, get, we got to a point where we couldn't, even with bringing other administrators and people from other centers, we couldn't sustain the ratios that New York State requires. The owner says they've already relocated at least seven families to other child care centers and will welcome the children back to care a lot when they're able to hire enough workers. In the meantime, there aren't a lot of other options many child care centers have because many child care centers have long waiting lists with families waiting at sometimes months to get in. Brennan? Oh, what a situation that is for the families. Thank you, Alex. More news now. A vigil last night in Louisville, Kentucky for the five victims killed, eight others injured in the mass shooting at a downtown bank Monday morning. The 911 calls also released that capture the horror of the attack. The gunman was killed in a shootout with police in the lobby. Two people remain hospitalized, including a rookie police officer who responded just a couple of days on the job. Former President Donald Trump is scheduled to sit for a deposition in New York later today. That is connected to a civil lawsuit brought on by the state attorney general. For this case, Trump, his children, and his company were sued for $250 million last year for claims of fraud. And the race for president maybe has a new potential contender. South Carolina Republican Senator Tim Scott announced he's forming an exploratory committee to consider a possible bid. That is among the first steps that these candidates would make before they do make it all official and jump in. 653, how about that weather for today, James? I know you've been watching the low this morning. Not really a low, the 62. Right. Right. Of where we were going to bottom out at. Amazing. Yeah, right. That's a near uh, record highs. Incredible. Uh, for uh, this high low temperatures. So really impressive there. Uh, numbers this afternoon getting to around 80 degrees. Believe it or not, it will be cooler along Lake Ontario. So expect temperatures uh, really uh, just to uh, skyrocket later today. It'll be a little bit cooler tonight, but we've got two days today and tomorrow to enjoy that sunshine and the warmth. What happens this weekend? I'll go over it at the end of the show, Brennan. That is the tease. All right, thank you, James. Talk to you in a couple of minutes. Sunrise traffic once again. Here we are, uh, four for four on our reports of no accidents this hour. Let's keep it that way. Enjoy the day getting out there. Again, just take it easy heading off to work this morning. Excitement is brewing at Highland Park in anticipation of this year's Lilac Festival, now just one month away. Organizers say there's so much to look forward to, this year being the 125th anniversary of the event. The Lilac's on track to be in full bloom just in time for the week and a half long festival. Something experts note doesn't happen overnight. They've been busy year round, all getting the flowers ready for their springtime big debut. These plants can live for well over a century. Some don't live that long, but others here just go on and on forever. The oldest one I can find right now is 1892. The Lilac Festival gets going May 12th. Seven Story Brewing in Bushnell's Basin is closing its current location, which is a beautiful spot, sits right along the Erie Canal. The company yesterday announced the property owners are not renewing the lease, and that runs out June 30th. The owners of the brewery promise new things are on the way. I want to mention, since it's great having Alex. Yes, this is, by yeah, the way, glad to join you. News 8 celebrates your birthday this week. How about <laughs> that? Happy yeah. birthday. Uh, thank you, guys. Yeah, it was on Tuesday, my day off, so can't complain there. But nice. good to be back one day before I leave for vacation. So glad to share the show with you. I know. He comes in with us on a Thursday. Right. Jetting out to hop on a cruise after that. Yeah, but right. there's good weather here already that I'm leaving behind. I can't believe it. <laughs> I was gonna say it's gonna be about as warm here as it will be on your vacation. When you go to the south, we're getting into the 70s this afternoon. I think we touch 80 degrees, uh, and then tomorrow looks great as well. But it all does come crashing down Saturday and Sunday. Still a weekend to savor, uh, but otherwise watching some rain showers. All right, thanks for watching us. News 8 at sunrise. We'll see you back here in a little while. CBS Mornings coming your way next. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.